You know, the banking system has really been in the eye of the storm since 2008. Just when you thought that banks were recovering after the last dose of crisis, you've gone straight into another crisis. For RBS, you took it on the chin the first time round, and also because the, the, the slowdown in the uh, UK, you know, pretty much dovetailed into the crisis the po in the post Lehman era. How is it looking right now? And uh, what kind of horizons are you looking at before growth really happens? You know, the banking sector is going through epic change right now. We have um, the economy around us, which we transmit in, in terms of how, we, how the economy behaves through the banking system. That is not a particularly happy sight across the world. We have legislative change and regulation change, which is of, of a size we've not seen before, with capital rules driving up the amount of capital in banks. We have the safety and soundness agenda across all banks across the world, which is causing them to delever in size, and we've done that in RBS. Um, and all of these things, if fundamentally withdraw capacity from an economy, uh, either through the lack of leverage, the increased capital, or just the safety agenda in general, um, these withdraw growth capacity from the economy, and the banking sector is not yet finished reforming. So we are, we are, we are contributing in some way as an industry to the lack of growth, but we're doing so because it is being forced upon us by the changes in regulation. And uh, also uh, another dimension to this is the sovereign debt that most countries have managed to accumulate during this period. So does that, uh, you know, uh, kind of push any hopes of real growth coming back into any of the major economies uh, into the horizon? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean the, the austerity is the word that's being used for governments trying to spend less money. But actually, governments across most of the Western world continue to spend more money than they're receiving. So one of the ways to, to actually get government receipts up is to create a growth agenda. And I think what we will see governments do more of is push towards creating some form of a growth agenda, so whether it's through targeted tax or investment um, incentives, but they will also have to continue with some form of austerity and put the two together in a more organized way to drive our way out of this. The austerity for the sake of austerity is today probably not working as well as governments would have liked it to work. We need to create some growth and have austerity, and that's a really delicate and fragile balance to work. But there have been attempts to, uh, uh, you know, trigger growth. You've had uh, multiple rounds of quantitative easing, and uh, one is expecting some kind of movement. And I, I know a lot of market men are watching out for June when the Fed might also come in with another round of quantitative easing. They're saying that, that could flush in liquidity in the system if Greece is kind of sorted out and the European leaders do something to stem the crisis, maybe we'll see the road to recovery again. And they're talking largely from a market's point of view. Do you see that happening? Do you think the next round of quantitative easing could help or do you think that's only going to you know, make uh, the, the genuine recovery uh, push it further? Well, I mean, if you take the U.S. as an example, the U.S. has got sort of you know, one, one and a half percent growth rates, looks like, in there. But there is still today a jobless recovery there. But there are signs that the U.S. economy is beginning to stutter into growth. It's certainly, as a, in terms of that level of growth, Europe would take today. Um, it, is, it, is, it is very difficult for, it, for the governments across the world to create this growth. And they have been trying, as you say, through QE, through flooding liquidity. But we have a gorge of liquidity or of leverage that is in the system after 20 years of a boom. And we have not yet delevered it. The consumer behavior across the world is still not consuming. So until the consumer feels confident, and until the consumer is willing to release their savings into consumption, we will not see the recovery. And that really is about confidence. So we need to resolve the Eurozone crisis. We need to ensure that people feel like there is a future. We need to feel that unemployment is truly starting to come down and that people can begin to invest, not just people in, as a consumption I, I device, but also companies who, who are hoarding cash at the edges of, of, uh, of commerce. Mm. And that's where the focus shifts to the emerging markets. But do you think the emerging markets, after a protracted period of uh, asset class uh, bubble because of the fact that a lot of the liquidity from the uh, quantitative easing has gone there, and the protracted uh, you know, um, uh, problems in Europe and the export market, are in a position to take on uh, the responsibility of consuming more to let the others grow? Well, I mean, I'm not sure it's a responsibility. I think it's a desire that, 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 <laughs> yeah. that, that manifests itself in an individual, but actually sure. it behaves as part of the economy. Confidence is the key to getting consumers to consume. Confidence is the key to getting the corporates across the entirety of the world to invest for the future. And confidence will only be created where we create stability in currencies, stability in politics, and of course stability in law. And all of these things need to be in place to ensure that we get the cash that is sitting at the edge of the system, uh, both in consumer pockets and in corporates, 
to be invested to create growth. India has a reverse of a problem, you think, right now? Because of the fact that the consumption is intact, but the, the sentiment is not, right? It, it is certainly the case that since my last visit to India and this visit, there is a, a mood which is, which is lower in terms of the, its optimism than it was a year ago. And I think some of that is caused by what appears to be you know, policy action not being as precise and deliberate as it should be. And also a, a, a couple of worrying things like uh, retrospective adjustment to the law, which we would hope will, you know, sh shouldn't be a, a continuing theme in India. The rule of law is what differentiates India and makes it a very good place to invest for the future. So. One view, uh, and that has been voiced, is that uh, even if they do push a re retrospective law and uh, they do, uh, you know, tighten uh, the rules on taxation, that India is one of the only places that is growing in the world, and hence money will have to flow in here. Is that? Uh, 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 when you talk to your clients, I mean, are they looking at India in the same way or has there been a, a recalibration of India in the story then? Everyone likes India. We like what we see, we like the opportunities that are here. But if you want to invest in infrastructure and you want to invest for the long-term benefit of the nation and the company, then you need to have confidence in the environment into which you're investing. The policymakers and everyone around the table in terms of India Inc. needs to ensure that there is no reason why someone would not invest today in India. If you are not confident that your investment is real and can be there for a long tenor of period, then you will be more hesitant in your investment and therefore the growth rate will be lower just by, by the natural cautiousness of people who will have less confidence than they naturally should have. Hmm. So are you seeing corporates not wanting or, or saying let's wait and watch? We're seeing a hesitancy, um, and a hesitancy because of a nervousness that you know an investment that is being made in very large size in creating the India of the future you need to be confident that it can make the returns that you expect it to make and if there is any chance that the conditions or the contracts that underpin that decision um, that will cause you to be cautious so everyone starts to focus on what they are truly good at which is what we have done over the last three years I think we will have a competitive advantage and be able to take market share from others